Yeah, so, okay, first things first, what are the signs that a business has got people in it who are suffering? You know, sometimes this is an interesting one because uh, mental health problems, we know from the data that 50% of people will not tell their managers they have a mental health problem regardless of how severe it is. So that, that you could be having a mental health problem in your team right now, and according to statistics, you do. <laughs> if you've got more than 10 people, you have at least a couple of people in there that may be having a mental health problem to, you know, to, depending on the severity of the, of the problem, it doesn't have to be completely severe, but you could be having two at least, and, um, but you may not know about it, or they may not be willing to talk about it. So the, the issue is big. It's, it can be under the surface, but what we're seeing now, especially in Australia, more people are coming out because we've become more aware. More people are putting their hand up and saying, yes, I do have a mental health problem. In some cases, they wait until there's a performance uh, management meeting, and then they've, they've gotten into trouble to say, well, the reason why I'm not performing is because I'm anxious or I'm, or I'm depressed. And then the HR teams are panicking and say, well, what do we do now? Because we went in with this objective of dealing with a conduct or a performance issue, but now we found that there is a, a mental health issue. What do we do? And that's when they come to us, they come to the Workplace Mental Health Institute. And that's why we wrote the book Mental Wealth, uh, you know, to, to help managers have a, a good balance between helping people and caring for people and making sure they're engaged and also taking care of the business. So mental wealth is not really a mental health book, it's a business, it's a leadership book that deals with the mental health aspect of things.